Hello and welcome to With Wellner Anderson. This is a channel where we talk about economic, we talk about political and historical things in simple terms. Today we're talking about the history of the gentrification of Harlem. Now, this video is a little different from most of the videos you see on gentrification because the subject matter here is to give you some background on what the history was like in Harlem before gentrification, how it got gentrified, and what gentrification is. So when you watch this video, it will give you the background to watch the other videos that show you what has happened and what gender gentrification has done. Let's start at the beginning. What is gentrification? Well, gentrification is an old term that comes actually from the word gentry. Gentry is the middle class or the nobles that would exist between the aristocracy and the, the people who then money, the, the peons basically. There is also something called racial identification. And what that is, is when assets are taken from people purely because of race. The term gentrification was, cla was classified and codified by a lady named Ruth Glass in London when she was looking at a couple of places in London to see how and why they had changed. You must destroy a, a neighborhood in order to gentrify. Some of the tools they've used in the past are blockbusting, where they'll sell one home and hope the rest of the people panic. Redlining, where insurance companies have said no investment in certain areas. The lack of private and public investment, zoning, de de developers getting deferred tax abasement, uh, tax um, rates, the restrictive covenants, restrictive covenants, which meant that you could really only sell the house within a pre-contract that you have set up, white flight, and there's something called the rent theory gap. Once the, time, once the real estate has been reduced to a certain level, it doesn't make much sense for the person to hold on to it. It makes sense for them to unload it. And particularly in Harlem now, there's something like Airbnb is becoming big also. Now let's go to this. The Federal Highways Act of 1934 called for projects being built throughout the United States. And they also implemented highways. In 1944, the Slum Clearance Act and Urban Renewal became big. Eminent domain became, became an essential thing to do as you're building on highway systems. Eminent domain gives the, 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 pub, the public or the government the right to buy your property at a predetermined value. In 1956, there was the National Defense and Highways Act which built out tremendous highways across the United States. It completely, completely devastated a lot of neighborhoods. Let's go and now talk about the history of Harlem and how, and, and where Harlem came from and, and how it came to being. The Dutch settled Manhattan, in, or at least that area in 1650, 1658. Harlem is mainly farmland. It went from 110th Street North to 155th Street, from one river to another. Once the elevated trains were brought in, this brought people to move uptown from downtown. Harlem was primarily an Irish, Jewish, and Italian neighborhood filled with row houses and multifamily units. Around 1904, the first subway arrived at Lenox Avenue in 125th Street. That was the beginning of the speculation. Keep in mind, there was a huge influx of Europeans coming into New York at that time. Between 1910 and 1930, in the black community in the South, there was the first great migration. Black people in New York did not live that much in the Harlem area before the first migration. They were spread out throughout New York City. At the same time, there was a great migration in Puerto Rico, where a lot of the Puerto Ricans saw to come to New York. President Truman implemented something called Operation Bootstrap, 
And what that was, was a way to try to get the island of Puerto Rico off agriculture and into some industrial way so, so the Puerto Ricans would have some confidence in staying in their country. Now, as long as we're talking about Puerto Ricans, we need to talk about East Harlem or Spanish Harlem or Barrio. El Barrio was an Italian area before the Puerto Ricans started to move in. This is an interesting little story, it's a sidebar, let me just go off to it. When, when the Triborough Bridge was built, there was a gentleman named Robert Moses who was called the, the master builder of New York. He built most of Southern New York. He had to do a favor for William Randolph Hearst, who was who is actually was one of the biggest, one of the largest publishers in the world. And what he did was he bought the Triborough Bridge north 15 blocks in New York, in the, in the Bronx, over to the west side, over to, to El Barrio, and completely crushed the Italian and Spanish neighborhood in El Barrio. That was done on purpose. There was no reason to go 15 blocks north, seven blocks west and to Manhattan, and then go south 15 blocks. That, tur tur that totally destroyed El Barrio. We're gonna talk a little bit now about Shriver's Row. Um, Shriver's Row is 138th Street and 139th Street between 7th and 8th Avenue in Harlem. Believe it or not, it was proposed by Robert Moses to tear down Shriver's Row and put up a project. And the people fought against it, it didn't happen. Who is the largest, who has the most to gain by gentrification in, 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 in Harlem? Well, you might be surprised. It's Columbia University. Columbia University owns over 200 pieces of property in New York City. Where they're located, and the type of property they owned or bought, which were dormitories, was in the Harlem Morningside area. So Columbia University has sat tremendous real estate from people who needed it in Morningside Heights. 125th Street back in the 60s was mainly a place where a lot of the Jewish stores were. Um, there was Bloomstein's, a large department store there. Um, most of the people who worked in there did, weren't from the area, from out of town. In 1950, we started building projects in earnest. Harlem lost, uh, 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 Harlem lost a lot of its prime property. And if you notice in Harlem, there aren't that many parks there. And there aren't that many places for people to go as a sidebar. 1970, there was a federal funds cutback that impacted all the cities in the United States. And in, by, by 1990, it could be measured the displacement of the population. And people were starting to be pushed out of Harlem. I'll give you a scale. Between 2010 and 2020, the white population in Harlem got, gained 18,000 people. The black population gained 10,000 people. Sugar Hill, Hamilton Heights, once exclusive areas in the Bronx are slowly becoming gentrified. Today, there are Whole, there are Whole Foods in Harlem, art galleries, hipsters markets, restaurants, and small businesses. Thank you very much. Please subscribe to the channel. I want to bring you more information like this. Please give me a thumbs up and have a good day.